guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is <laughs> the second best video of the year. My favorite video of the year to film every single year is my best of 2020, obviously, because I get to talk about my favorite things of the year, but we can't have the best without a whole lot of worst. So today's video is going to be the worst makeup I tried in 2020. There were a lot fewer products that I didn't enjoy this year. I've been on a low buy slash kind of no buy for the whole year, so I haven't really been buying things unless I really, really want them and I really think that I'm gonna like something, but there were some duds. These are gonna be in no particular order, and of course, if some of these products were for you, that's awesome. A lot of makeup that we like and dislike is very much up to personal preference. So if you've managed to get any of these to work for you, um, let me know, obviously, because I would love for some of these to not be a waste. If you see me looking down, I have my laptop on my lap with the list of products, because most of these products I don't have on my person anymore. I decluttered most of them once I figured out I didn't like them. So anything that I don't have, I'll flash on screen so you can see, but I do have a few of them still here. Um, yeah. Pretty self-explanatory video. Also, just a friendly reminder that my holiday 2020 giveaway is currently still open, so you can enter using the link down below. This is the prize lineup. In my opinion, it's the best prize lineup I've ever had, and I'm super excited about this one. Um, it's open internationally, and it's also the last giveaway. So good luck to everyone. Thank you to everyone who's already entered, and you still have your chance, so go enter down below. Today's do fairy of the day is Grace. Thank you so much for having your notification bell on, and today we have no chance of you needing to mind your business. <laughs> Full details of this look should already be on Instagram. 2020. <laughs> I said that these have no particular order, but this definitely has the number one worst spot. So everything after this has no particular order. Um. Oh wow. Oh wow. Hatred. I'm in Spain, but the S is silent. Becca Zero No Pigment Virtual Foundation, AKA Julia Getting Scammed 2020. I think the fact that I wanted to believe in this so hard made the disappointment that much more. But basically this was advertised as the solution to my no foundation dreams. So I don't think I've talked about it that much other than in like maybe two videos. I've been on a no foundation kick for about the last two months or so. So today, no foundation. Only really wearing foundation for like special events or stuff, but kind of phasing it out of my everyday use in hopes that it would better my skin. But early on in that, I decided to try out this foundation because it seemed kind of like the answer to everything that I wanted. Basically, this was advertised as having technology in it that would blur on like a molecular nano level the pores of your face and all the imperfections that you would use foundation to cover up without actually being foundation. So it had no pigment to it, no color. It was just supposed to blur. This did. Nothing. I've heard that this does not work as a like smoothing primer either so that kind of defeats the purpose of like this not working as a foundation but then you still being able to use it as like a nice smoothing silicone primer. Apparently this balls up under foundation. I haven't tried it under foundation because that defeats the purpose for me. I was using it for work for a couple weeks because I've been stubborn and I've been wanting to use it up but I haven't touched this since like mid September maybe. It doesn't really give any extra moisturization either. I would say maybe the tiniest amount of smoothing on my nose pores, which are pretty big, so. But I only noticed it because I was wanting to see something. This was utterly disappointing. But I'm very disappointed because I feel like Becca most of the time comes out with really well thought out good releases. They don't come out with a ton of things all the time. So their last like major collection release was the Becca Skin Love collection, which I really enjoyed. I was pretty excited about the Zero collection, especially because it was kind of geared towards the like no makeup, glossier type vibes, which I've been really loving. But this was literally, it was, it was no makeup. I'll give them that. I've tried out a lot of ColourPop stuff this year, so um, obviously there were gonna be some duds in there, but probably the most disappointing thing was a collection that I really, really wanted to enjoy, and that was the Sailor Moon collection. As of now, I actually only have one thing left from the Sailor Moon collection. I gave everything away to friends who were wanting to try out the collection. So I have one of the blushes, which I think is cute, but it's hard to mess up a blush, so I don't have problems with it, but I wouldn't buy it again by any means. The two major disappointments from the collection, so I'll start with the palette. Palettes tend to be like the central item of most collections for ColourPop. It was advertised as being like a sheer formula so I understand that the colors weren't necessarily supposed to be like super super high impact and pigmented. Uh, <laughs> they were also bad. It was all mattes with micro glitters which I did not love. They were also really 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 powdery like a ton of powdery kick up. I've never had any type of like irritation before from Colourpop eyeshadows or any Colourpop eye stuff before. I've heard of some people having it but I've never experienced it myself but the shimmers and the pressed glitters in that palette did give me a little bit of itchiness on the eyes but I just kind of found it to be not the quality that I tend to expect from Colourpop. Usually they're pretty good about being consistent but I've found recently especially with their kind of more high profile collections 
that are more limited edition type releases that the quality just isn't there. We'll talk about another example later on in this video, but the Sailor Moon palette was probably my least favorite palette from ColourPop this year. Something else from the collection that I really did not enjoy was the Sailor Moon glosses. For this collection, they used the Ultra Glossy Lip Formula, which is ColourPop's original lip gloss formula. They've since come out the Luxe Gloss Formula, which I feel like they've been using a lot more often in their more recent collections, which I love. They also have the So Juicy collection. I stan. Sorry, Hannah. I'm hoping that they'll kind of start to phase out the ultra glossy lip formula because in my opinion, it's the stickiest and thickest formula from ColourPop. Those glosses I really did not enjoy because I felt like they didn't sit well on top of other things and they tended to move around and just kind of like, just look weird on top of any type of lip product that I had underneath it. Those were disappointing too because I really wanted to like them. They were like super cute pink, starry Sailor Moon packaging, but I think this collection was like zero substance and all pretty packaging, which I love pretty packaging but the inside has gotta be good too. Case in point. Yeah, yeah. The Too Faced Diamond Light Highlighter has been on my wish list for ever since it came out. This is the pink shade called Fancy Pink Diamond. I really wanted the um, the original like white iridescent one when it first came out. This was sent to me by BoxyCharm. If you know, <laughs> you know the whole story of the confusion that happened with that. I am Confucian, but I was really excited to test this out because it seemed like a really pretty, smooth and non-glittery formula. Yes, it also doesn't show up. <laughs> this takes subtle highlighter to a new level. I really, it just, where's the flavor? I love me a good subtle highlighter, like Essence Pure Nude. We love her. This is just sad. You have to build it up so much to get like a semblance of glow. And then when you do build it up, it's a really powdery formula. So it just looks powdery and dry on the cheekbone. Not what I was expecting at all. It is really just pretty packaging. So, so I was using it for a while as just like vanity decoration because it does look really cute next to my roses, but sadness. Pastels in general were a pretty big palette trend this year. So I'm planning on doing a video talking about like the biggest eyeshadow palette color scheme trends of the year. Stay tuned for that, but pastels were a huge thing, especially from like spring to summer. Colourpop came out with their tie-dye collection, I believe, and a lot of other brands jumped onto the pastel train. Pastels though are notoriously very difficult to formulate and tend to be on the chalky side if they're not done well. Just because you have to have a pretty strong white base to most pastel shades to make them true pastels, and having a strong white base makes them powdery and chalky on the eyes. One that I was really excited for and I wanted to like very much was this really cute palette from OMFG Cosmetics. The outer packaging is so cute, kind of annoying to store, but super, super cute. And the inside of the palette just gave me beautiful, strong ice cream vibes. However, chalk. Particularly the light blue, the light purple, the, um, the light pink, surprisingly, as well, and the mint green. They just didn't have a ton of pigmentation to them. I did end up keeping the outer packaging, though, and because it was magnetic, I was able to pop out the shades, put my own singles in here. So now this is my magnetic singles palette, and I love it. But the Sugar and Sweets palette, though I had high expectations, unfortunately, was not great. Super cute color scheme, though, and aesthetically beautiful. Something I didn't even end up reviewing because it was just... Such blasphemy, such ridiculous nonsense. I decided to try out the Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation earlier this year. I've always been on the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation Smells Like Paint train, but when I originally anti-held the Dewy Foundation, a lot of people were saying that it was really good and didn't smell as strongly of paint thinner. So I figured I would give it a try, especially because I love finding really nice luminous drugstore foundations. So so far, I've only really loved the, um, the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. That is lovely. Very, very glowy though. It doesn't last very well if you have very oily skin. So I only use that on myself when I'm like in a dry skin season. This foundation, I don't know if it, I, it might've just been my skin, but it it's like it didn't want to be friends with my face. I tried so hard to blend it out and it just, it wouldn't blend into my skin. It just looked like it was sitting on top of my skin. Some very dewy foundations can do that sometimes where it just looks like a shiny layer of like still wet liquid on your face and it hasn't been pushed in very well. It almost felt like sticky and wet to a point where I was sure that if I touched it, it was gonna like smudge. So for whatever reason, I just couldn't get that one to work with my skin and I ended up giving it to somebody else. I did pass it on to a friend though who has slightly oilier skin than me and she really, really enjoyed it. For the most part, I would say that it's very rare to find like a bad foundation. It's very much just like dependent on if the formula is gonna work for your skin type. So I hesitate to ever say that a foundation is straight up bad unless it like heavily oxidizes or just looks whack on everybody <laughs> but this one I just think was bad for me here's an objectively bad thing <laughs> I bought a lip balm from the Pat McGrath Star Wars collection 
it spoke to me. This is the Gold Astral one. It's the C3PO lip balm. I kind of wanted the, um, I wanted the dark side, like Stormtrooper one, but I liked the packaging on this one better. It was all gold and pretty. I bought this because I wanted something from the collection, but I was like, I, you probably can't go wrong with a lip balm. And I do really enjoy Pat McGrath's, um, lipsticks. I like their matte lipstick formula. So I was fairly certain that I would enjoy this and that there was no way that they could mess up like a lip balm. Anakin would hate this because it feels like sand on your lips. This lip balm, it's like a clear balm with like gold glitter throughout it. So it's obviously more of like a cosmetic makeup y lip balm than like an actual skincare type lip balm that you would put on right before bed. But the gold glitter in here, for some reason, is very like gritty feeling. <laughs> Strange texturization on the lips that looks awful under most lipsticks. So she is very much just a collector's item now, just sitting taunting me. Probably second least favorite ColourPop palette this year was the Candy Castle collection. This was their Candyland collection. I was very excited about it. Um, I ended up Frankensteining my palette, so this is not the original color scheme, but the original palette was pastels. So I was already pretty like wary about how it would perform. Almost all of the shades in there were matched with micro glitters in them, and I see why they added in the micro glitters, because I truly think that the pastel shades in there would not have shown up on the eyes had they not had the glitter in there to kind of break up and loosen up the formula to make it more pigmented and a lot of the time that's why most brands include glitters into their mattes um, with ColourPop they just do it for funsies to torment me i really only stand mattes with micro glitters when they are in like brown or black shades because then they're just so pretty to do a winged liner with buying the really cute packaging the candy castle palette basura i do like ColourPop's um 10 pan palette size though so i feel like their palettes are really compact and there's not a lot of wasted space so after frankensteining it i have been loving it but the original candy castle palette no. A few more things. Before I started my medicated skincare regimen um, a couple months ago, and back when I was reviewing skincare, I was testing out a lot of different things and angering my face. But one of the things that my skin liked the least this year was a hydrating serum from Sand and Sky. It's called the Emu Apple um, Drops. It was supposed to be kind of like a dual face serum, so it had a hydrophobic and hydrophilic component that were supposed to kind of act in tandem to deeply penetrate your skin with lots of hydration. I got like my least favorite type of acne, which are those tiny under the skin bumps that you can't like do any, you can't extract them or anything. They're just there all over my chin and then up around my cheeks. So I actually thought it was a rash for a while. So I was pretty concerned about it, but it went away within like five days or so. Something I finally got around to trying this year that I've been curious about for a while were the Huda Beauty Matte and Metal um, Metallic Shadow Duos. I've seen a lot of like Instagram makeup tutorial type videos with these and I've been very interested particularly in the matte liquid side just to see how it perform. I think the matte side was significantly more difficult to blend out than just using a powder eyeshadow would be. I think the drawing point of like having a liquid matte shadow is that it's supposed to be very easy and diffusible, but I felt like blending it out was harder. And then the shimmering side on here, this creased so badly and I don't even have very oily eyelids. I tried so many different primers to try and get this one to work, including using no primer to see if that would help it sit better, but it just did not want to stay in one piece on my eyes. It would just kind of migrate. If anyone uses these and has any tips on how to use them, I would love to know, but I know a lot of people would just buy them for the glitter side and don't even use the matte, which I think kind of defeats the purpose of having a duo, so. And then last, this was by no means the worst thing I tried this year, but it was probably one of the more disappointing things just because I was really excited about this formula. The Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powders. So basically Nabla's beautiful baked highlighters. This is one of the blush shades. I could only find the blushes, but I tried out two of the highlighter shades as well. I was super excited about these because I love Big Chalet formulas and I feel like they're one of the best um, options for getting a powder highlighter that looks really natural on the skin. For example, the Amrezy highlighter. Plus, if you call something a glass skin finished glow powder, I'm gonna want to try it. I really do like this formula a lot for the bronzers, and the blushes were actually really nice as well, but, but I think it was just too dry and stiff of a formula to work for highlighters. I, I felt like, again, they just looked weirdly dry and sat on top of the cheekbone rather than really melting in. They could look fine, especially if you like spray them down afterwards with setting spray, but especially for something promising a glass skin finish, it was just kind of meh. Oh, I forgot. I tried the ColourPop sponges earlier this year. Um, this is not the sponge I'm going to talk about. ColourPop came out with a silicone center sponge. And I, I've seen a lot of other brands kind of doing the same thing. Basically, the draw of it, it was supposed to have a foam like outside so you could still blend stuff, and then a silicone interior so it would soak up less product. Intriguing and kind of a different twist from like those chicken cut little silicone sponges that were going around a couple years ago. I did end up using it just for the outer foam exterior because it wasn't an awful sponge if you disregarded the silicone part, but that silicone core, I felt like it really just smudged around any liquid foundation. I tried also using that sponge for powder and I still felt like it looked 
kind of weird. I don't know, I just feel like beauty sponges, it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> All right guys, that's it for the worst of 2020. Overall, I would say it was a pretty decent year still for things I tested out. I did end up enjoying probably like 90% of the things I tried out, but there were a few disappointments. I will forever be mad at Becca. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed down below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you made it to the very end of this video, you get the bonus meme. Here's to a better 2021. Bye. Whatever that fucking name.